the gospel of john chapter 8 from verse 1 the bible says while jesus went to the mount of olives but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area and all the people started coming to him and he sat down and taught them the scribes and the pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle they said to him teacher this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery now in the law of moses commanded us to stone such women so what do you say they said this to test him so that he um, they could have some charge to bring against him jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger but when they continued asking him he straightened up and said to them let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her again he bent down and wrote on the ground in response they went away one by one beginning with the elders so he was left alone with the woman before him then jesus straightened up and said to her woman where are they has no one condemned you she replied no one sir then jesus said neither do i condemn you go and from now on do not sin anymore praise god and then we are going to read another scripture in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 1 Hence, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And then the last one is John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving, we come before you this morning. We surrender ourselves to you. We pray for your mercy, your presence, your grace to fill our hearts, Lord, that you may fill us with your Holy Spirit. It just turns something new and help us to grow more in the knowledge of you and in wisdom. Help us to find to have our mind focused on you and our eyes fixed on you and to be transformed from inside out. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So um the topic for this meditation that we are going to meditate on this day is Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? And it is an issue of faith. We read three scriptures that are all going to guide us into this meditation. Now, the most important thing, we chose a story in the gospel that was presented before Jesus before he even died on the cross but his reaction and the lesson that we learn from what he did has led us to John 3.16 and Romans chapter 8 verse 1 you see Jesus came to abolish um, the law of condemnation and eternal damnation and to become the life-giving presence of God. And by doing that, he died on the cross so we can have the breath of life and live and live in him. So John 3.16 reminds us that for God so loved, it is out of love that he chose to send his son to come to the world. So if he did it out of love, then there is no way that out of love he could have come to condemn. 
so out of love he went on the cross out of love he was pierced to his our pain out of life love he suffered so we can be made whole and then um the next verse 17 says god did not send his son into the world to condemn it is very direct but it is good that it is here because <laughs> we can learn more from it the first verse says that god sent his son um so that everyone who believes in him might not perish so if we don't believe in jesus then they will be perishing what kind of perishing of course eternal eternal perishing but even through the journey it means that if we don't listen to him and believe in him then something else will be growing in us and here the bible says that he did not send his son uh, to the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him but that the world might be saved through him so the presence of jesus in the world is to bring salvation and no wonder he says i am the way the truth and the life the way the truth and the life so if he is the way the truth and the life then our belief and faith in him is going to help us to get to our destination safely the truth of what we need we need while we are here we need in order to receive what he has promised he is the truth at this point we just read the fact that the bible says that they were testing him so this is verse um 4 they told him teacher this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery And then verse 6 says they said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. So it means that <laughs> the Pharisees and the scribes had failed to know and embrace this fact why Jesus came into the world to reveal the heart of the Father and to establish mercy and grace. and they had no probably no clue or even if they did they were not open to believe or receive what Jesus came to offer i don't know what they believed in they believed in condemning those who have sinned and as you can see even here it is worse because if she was committing adultery then the man should have been present but look at the situation it's only the woman so there is much more beyond what we can see on this text and then uh, jesus said let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her <laughs> it sounds interesting but this is the truth So if the Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God while we are still sinners Jesus died for us he is coming to die for us sinners so if Jesus came to die for sinners then it means we all have sinned we are all in need of the grace and mercy uh, from God so none of us has um has that kind of capacity uh, to point a finger on the other one and to condemn the other so the truth is what jesus says if we listen to this truth then it is going to change our hearts change our minds convert us and thus we receive the salvation thus we are ushered in into the new life that jesus came to give us and jesus said to the woman woman was 10 where are they has no one condemned you she replied no one sir then jesus said neither do i condemn you go and from now on do not sin again praise god i love those words because this is exactly john 3 17 16 and 17 jesus releases mercy at that moment and that moment 
the grace of God is revealed, not just in the life of this woman, but for us today who are reading the word of God. This is the truth that we need to embrace. This is the truth that we need to live on. This is the truth that needs to purify, sanctify us, to change us, to change even the way we perceive things, our perception, the way we, we handle issues in our lives, and to know who really God is, to know who our God is. Because if this happened, then it happens so we can learn from it. And so that is why Romans 8 chapter 1, when the Bible says, Hence now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, it means we have to be in him. And if we are in him, then there is no condemnation because he did not come to condemn. So who is it that condemns? It depends on what we listen to. If we listen to Jesus, if we listen to the living word of God, he who is the word of God, then we know that we are forgiven. Then we know that if Jesus forgave this woman, he did it because that is what he was meant to come and do. And that is the heart of God, the heart of mercy, the heart of forgiveness. Condemnation is not in the package of what Jesus came to do. It was not in his assignment. And the truth sets us free because the Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's in John 8, 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said that he won to the Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Praise God. So it means that we have to choose to remain in the truth of the word of God. Because if we listen to him, then we will know the truth. And the truth will set us free. And the truth will destroy every bondage from our mind, from our lives. The truth will separate us from that which is not from God. But if we don't, we don't listen to Jesus, we don't listen to the word of God, we don't listen, then definitely faith cannot arise. We cannot uh, confess to believing in him whom we do not listen to. So if we listen to Jesus, then... He takes charge of our mind. He takes charge of our hearts. And whatever it is that he came to do and establish becomes part and parcel of our lives. So we don't go living life with condemnation. We don't go living life with believing in the lies of the devil. We don't go listening to the deception. We don't believe in it if we are true we are true children of God we listen to Jesus when we listen to Jesus we know he came to save the world he came to save you and I so there is no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus it doesn't matter what sin this woman had committed Jesus told her neither do I condemn you go and from now on do not sin anymore this was the Lord is repeating to you and I we cannot um we cannot just decide by ourselves. We cannot allow people to decide for us the measure of grace that we are meant to receive. But we need to know that God's heart is open to give. So the new life that Jesus comes to establish in our lives, comes to establish in us, is when we have our hearts open to receive and to believe to receive and to believe, to receive and to believe, to receive and to believe. We receive and then we believe. And we find this scripture in the book of First John. Um, First John, and that is verse 12. But those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Those who did accept him. To accept is to receive, to receive what he came to give us, to receive his salvation, to receive his mercy, to receive his grace, to receive him. 
he gave power to become children of God. So we need to have open hearts. We need to have an open mind. We need to believe the word of God as it is, not to change it, not to try to uh, twist it, but to believe it as it is. If the Bible says that God loved the world, then he gave us his only begotten son, so that if we believe in him, then we receive this salvation, we cannot perish. Condemnation is not from God. And the more we listen to Jesus, we will come to know like what um, these men who are coming to accuse this woman learned. They did not even say a word, they walked away. And the message is that Jesus came to save. He did not come to condemn. So no way could he have accepted to condemn this woman. The sin she committed, yes, it was great in the sight of men. But if Jesus died on the cross, he died for every sin. And it really doesn't matter what sin, because nobody has the right to judge anyone else. But if we all listen to God, if we all seek him, if we all believe in Jesus, then we shall have our lives and our hearts open to cultivate an atmosphere of mercy and grace in our hearts. And when we look at each other, then we use the same kind of principle that Jesus used when this woman was presented to him. It is not for us to judge. It is not in our place or in the place of anyone but we need to listen to the word of God and believe the truth is revealed. We are transformed by the truth of what God says. But if we listen to something else that is not the truth, then that is what shapes our mindset. That is what shapes our perception and then definitely affects our behavior towards one another, towards others. So it is an opportunity for us to meditate on this fact that do I believe in Jesus? Do we believe in Jesus? If I believe in Jesus, then there has to be some changes in my life, in the way I perceive myself or others, in the way I, I believe, you know, the truth that I believe should set our minds free. The truth that we believe in, Jesus is the truth, should set our mind free, should set our life free, free from any form of slavery. Slavery of mind is believing in the lies of the enemy. Slavery of heart or whatever kind of slavery. And then we know that we are free children of God, not born of human generation, but God's decision. So, as we leave this day, we pray that the Lord will help us to have the truth of who he is be established in us, that we may listen to his truth, the truth of who he is and who we are in him, and that what Jesus came to give us by dying on the cross of Calvary will become a reality in our lives when we listen to the truth and believe in the truth and allow his word to transform our perception, to transform our character, and to be able to live each day with the knowledge and the wisdom that is in the word of God that way, then we shall live as a new creation. Then we shall live as a new creation pleasing to God thus following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. And also, um, it is an opportunity for God to exercise his mercy and grace more in our lives, and we too become instruments of mercy and grace, not condemnation, because that is not part of uh, the kingdom that Jesus came to establish here on earth. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving, Lord, we offer this day, we offer our lives, we offer to you, Lord Jesus, our hearts, our minds help us 
to have our hearts engraved uh, with the, the reason why you came into the world, that your truth will be established in us, that your truth will transform our mind, our perception, that your truth will change our hearts and help us to be able to grow more in the wisdom that you have given us in your word. It's going to help us to be able to deal with the people around us or even ourselves in the way you would help us to let and allow your truth to transform us, Lord. Deliver us from the slavery, the slavery of believing and listening to the lies of the enemy. Lord Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you may set our mind free, set us free, Lord, and help us like you did and you spoke to this woman that you may be one with you one with you and thus believe that there is no condemnation for those who are in you you came to reveal the mercy of God the grace of God let this be our portion to us this day and every day of our lives and that Lord we may also become instruments of your mercy and to allow your grace to flow through us to others around us for the greater glory of your name in Jesus name we pray with thanksgiving Amen in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen